I'm out here in eastern Nevada, a place I haven't done any exploring, and I'm with my good friend Jim and his two buddies, Lance and Larry, and these guys have been wheeling together for 40 years, and they know some of the great spots to go check out here. We're gonna go visit some old mines, some old ghost towns, and look for some epic campsites. This is gonna be an amazing next few days, and we're gonna take you along for our adventure. Welcome to Show Recon. My name is Brad, and over the next several days, I'm going to take you along as we go explore eastern Nevada in search of some old mines, some old ghost towns, do some amazing camping, and just go wheeling out here. This is a place I haven't had the opportunity to explore, and I'm super thankful that these guys have invited me out here. This is going to be a pretty amazing week. Now, we are going to be way off the grid and we're gonna be going up in some elevation and it's supposed to be pretty cold, but thankfully I think I've got just all the gear I need, but I'm super excited. I am, uh, I'm really looking forward to this trip and I hope you guys enjoy it. First ghost town is just about 40 or 50 miles ahead and uh, we've got about 75 to 80 miles we're gonna put in just today alone. So we've gotta got to lay down the miles here on the dirt. We started our adventures on Cane Springs Road just off of Highway 93, about 30 miles south of Alamo, Nevada. We'll be working our way north over the next few days, getting very remote in this backcountry. There is a massive network of trails out here that go deep off grid, so we made sure to plan our fuel stops accordingly and brought a little extra just in case, which we will find ourselves needing. If you venture out this way, I highly recommend you travel with someone else in another vehicle because there is no cell reception out here and over the next several days, except for our fuel stops, we didn't encounter a single soul on the trail. You don't want to break down or have an unfortunate event happen out here on your own because getting assistance could be a challenge. All right, we are just over 10 miles in. We're on a pretty wide open, pretty smooth dirt road, and I am doing, I'm doing 65 right now. We are hauling down this road, but we need to lay down a lot of miles today to get to where we want to be tonight before dark. It's already 2.40, so the goal is to get to camp before dark, fingers crossed, but we're gonna still stop and see a couple things, and our first destination is some reminiscences of an old ghost town, which I'm pretty excited to be, but I am just so thankful to be out here. You know, Jim and his buddies, they have decades, I mean 40 years of experience coming out to places like this, and so they are just a wealth of knowledge, and I'm honored that they invited me out here and, uh, and are gonna share these with me. So this is gonna be an awesome, awesome next couple of days. I'm having a blast today. You know, it's been a while since I've been on a long adventure in the JK. I've done a couple, you know, smaller trails and hardcore trails just to break in, you know, all the modifications we've done. But this is the first long trip in it. And man, I just love how it's performing. You know, the 538 gears, the 39s, this long arm suspension just soaks it all up. It's so nice to drive. I am, uh, I am very, very happy with, uh, with the JK. There's some more snow on the ground over here. Man, beautiful up here.
All right, well, we were in the dry desert when we started, and now we are in some nasty, gooey, thick mud that is just flinging all over the place. There's a little bit of snow up here, but it's mostly mud. This is gonna be a, a very dirty trip, a very dirty trip, but uh, we're having a blast up here. It is beautiful up here, beautiful. So it is a little after 4.30. We've gone about 51 miles and we've climbed about 5,800 feet and we're still climbing. And it's just about 44 degrees. And my Jeep is covered in mud. It has not been this muddy in a very long time. Today would be a good day to have full width fenders and not these kind of narrow width fenders. Uh, I, I, <laughs> it's, my, my Jeep's destroyed. Uh, one thing to mention, I am out of windshield washer fluid. Uh, my fault, I didn't think about it, and I could not get all this mud off of my windshield right now. And I thought about pouring a bottle of water in there, but tonight it's probably gonna get below freezing up here in the mountains, so the last thing I wanna do is have that freeze. So we are gonna be hitting a town probably sometime tomorrow, and maybe I'll get lucky and can find some of the washer fluid that is made for below freezing. But just a good reminder, make sure you fill up your washer fluid before you head out of the trip. All right, we just went through the section where we thought the Finley cabin and mine were, but we were driving really slow, looking out the windows, and we couldn't see anything. And we had it, I should we, they had it on their map, but we couldn't see anything. And uh, it's getting late, the sun's starting to go down, so we really need to kind of go find camp. So we've just kind of pressed on. So no, uh, no cabin or old mine today, but uh, there are still several on the trip that these guys want to show me. So I think we're going to be looking for camp here pretty soon. Did I mention my Jeep is really, really muddy? I'm having a blast today, guys. So awesome. All We have uh, encountered some pretty deep snow on the trail and uh, there are no tracks here. So nobody has been through here since it snowed. And so, and we are climbing up a mountain. So we are really, we are really working hard to keep our momentum go going. And uh, it's a little slippery. It's a little slippery, but man, I'm having a blast. The only problem is, is the sun is going down. So you can't really see a whole lot anymore. And, uh, I don't know how long until we get to camp, but I, I'm having a blast out here. Wheeling in the snow with these guys, good times. All right, we are still climbing this mountain and you uh, can see here, nobody has gone this way before. And there's a little bit of a, of a berm here with just a little drop. And Jim was starting to slide off. And uh, so he's trying to back up and then there's a tree in the way. So we've got to kind of get this sorted. We're just taking our time, thinking our way through this for a minute. How's it look up there? It gets, gets pretty soft right here. As you go around the corner, it gets really deep yeah. and soft. It drops off the mountain, but on the other side. Yeah, but it gets really deep, and there's a curve. We get over this hill down in that deep snow. We could, yeah. yeah. So like this spot right here, it's off camber. There's no berm to stop it if it start if a jeep starts to slide off. Even the guys following in my tracks could easily slide off. Right. So you know it's dark. If it was daylight, this would be fun. Yeah. But there's no good place to camp here. So yeah. I suggest we abandon this attempt and go back, take the other turn to the, to the mine, right. which was probably lower elevation, yeah. 
and go there that way. And we go to Helena from the backside. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah, I know my Bronco would make it. Yeah, right. right, right, right. <laughs> it's a good thing it's not here to show us. Right? <laughs> Lucky for you. So Jim's backing up as slowly as he can, and I'm just going to inch it back, but I'm going to stay close just in case we need to winch or strap. But I think I think we look pretty clear. I'm going to back up just a hair, just give him some room. Yeah, I think we got this. Wheeling in the snow can be a ton of fun, but it also adds a bit of increased risk. And when you are on the side of a mountain, climbing up and things begin to get slippery, well, sometimes turning around is the best call. The last thing we wanted was to be doing a late night snow recovery in the dark. So while we had to backtrack and find another route, it was absolutely the right call. We made our way slowly down the mountain and found another track that would lead us to where the guys were hoping we'd be camping for the night. And thankfully, when we arrived, we had the place all to our side. Right Alright guys, we've arrived to camp and our camp is this old abandoned mine, Delamar Mine, and there's a bunch of structures we saw as we were driving up, but uh, we'll go explore those in the morning. But we've got some nice flat areas because everybody's going to be sleeping on the ground in tents and sleeping bags and give bivy sacks. So we've got good spots, so we're going to get a fire going and start chilling around camp. It's been a great day. Setting up camp didn't take long, and with temperatures dropping quickly, and after a long day on the trail, we opted to skip a big dinner and just grab a few snacks, reminisce about our day, and stay warm around the campfire. Beautiful, beautiful morning. That red sky, sunrise, the snow top mountains in the distance, the mines all behind us and around us and all the old structures, some coffee. They're back there cooking breakfast. It's a perfect, perfect camp morning. Now, yesterday was awesome. Going from that low line desert all the way up into the mountains and the snow here, it was a blast. Uh, you know, we had a little technical challenge with that snow and had to kind of reroute, but we still ended up where we wanted to be, which is this awesome, old gold mine and so this morning we're going to take our time drink some more coffee and then kind of go explore some of these buildings and then start working our way north here in nevada there is so much to see out here and as i am looking behind the camera right now you cannot see a building or anything for miles and miles so we are very remote right now which is which is pretty cool so i'm excited to see what's to come
This morning, we will be exploring this Delamar ghost town, which is an old gold and silver mining town where gold was initially discovered in 1889. By 1897, there were more than 3,000 residents living here while the mine was cranking out over 250 tons of ore daily. This was the, one of the largest and most profitable mining operations in the region at its time. But in 1900, many of the buildings here were destroyed by fire, and by 1909, the mine was closed. Thankfully, because many of the buildings were made of stone, now, more than 100 years later, there are still some structures standing to go explore. This is the stuff that I am really excited to check out this weekend. You know, this old housing structure is still standing after over 130 years. That's pretty amazing. And all the work that must have gone into the masonry of these rocks, you know, they pulled these out of the grounds to build this house. And look at the view these people had. What an awesome view. I mean, it was probably hard work up here, but there was over $8 million in gold in the 1890s that they pull out of here. And that in 1890 was a whole lot of money, so. Pretty cool, there is all kinds of foundations and old stuff out here. We're gonna just keep checking it out. And there's actually, there's actually wild horses out here too, which is pretty cool. We found several mine access tunnels in the area, and this one in particular was extremely large. The tunnel kept going and going for a long time, and there were numerous offshoots. It was so deep and so long that we only explored a small fraction of it. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you are exploring old mines like this, know that they are no longer maintained, and you accept some risk exploring them. Additionally, make sure you know your way out. A tunnel like this you can easily get lost in. After getting our fill of what it must have been like to work in these mines way back when, Lance and Larry took a look at the map and began plotting our next route and destination. We still have so much more to go see. We have been having a blast exploring all the old, old mines and buildings. It's super cool. Uh, we are uh, we're heading to Caliente, which is a small town not too far from here. Going to fuel up just uh, just around a quarter tank of gas, and we are going to be going deeper and deeper into the back country and mountains this afternoon. And uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of gas stops going forward, so we need to make sure we have a full tank of gas. So we've got a few more few more interesting stops planned. I don't know what they are, but these guys are telling me that it's gonna be worth it. So I'm excited to see where we end up next.
Jim, you were just sharing an interesting fact about this cemetery. What can you tell us? So this cemetery is uh, just around the bend uh, from yeah. Della Mine there. And uh, there's the cemetery has been here for a long time. This is Helena on the map. And there's a lot of graves here. And the gold, all the gold that was pulled out of Delamo was embedded in quartzite. And in order to get the gold out, they had to crush the quartzite which created a lot of very fine dust that the miners would breathe in and it would it would give them what was called silicosis which obviously was deadly over time and a lot of miners that worked Delamo are right here today We are still working our way to Caliente for gas, but we have climbed. We're now about 6,500 feet up in elevation, and we've hit the snow again, and uh, we're starting to fling the mud a little bit more. But you know, we could have we could have taken a faster way and just got on the, the hard ball and just headed out there. But this is the way to do it: in the snow, the pine trees. taking a left off of the trail we were just on and we are breaking uh, breaking trail here there is nobody that's been down here since it snowed and there's only I don't know four or five inches of snow so it's not too bad but hopefully it stays just like this and we don't get into another situation where we're on a cliff and a little off camera like we did last night but so far it's going fine it's beautiful up here Okay, we have been putting in a lot of miles and we knew that we may need fuel. And well, Jim and I, both JKs running 39s have been eating through the fuel. The JL is doing great, it's still at a half tank, but we are just right at empty and we don't wanna risk it. Plus, you don't wanna get too low and start picking up any sediment that's in the bottom of the tank. So we're just gonna top off now with the fuel that we've got. We should have plenty to get us to Caliente. After putting down several more miles on the dirt, we hit the pavement back on Highway 93 for a few miles through a very scenic canyon, making our way to the small railroad town of Caliente. Caliente was founded in 1901 and has served as an essential railroad hub ever since the Union Pacific Railroad was completed here in 1905. With a population of just over 1,100, this is the least populated incorporated city in Nevada. 
This was the perfect destination for us to quickly jump off the trail, fuel up, and since it was lunchtime, opted to grab a quick bite to eat at one of the few restaurants here in town. A pretty good burger, I might add. We didn't have a whole lot of time to explore. We needed to get back on the dirt and begin our trek north in search of tonight's campsite. So we just put Caliente in our rearview mirrors. Got a full tank of gas, got a full belly, and it was really cool stopping to see that little railroad town. It was very unique. You know, it's it's nice to stop at places like that, you know, when you're on the back rows of America and just see how other people are living across the country. That's a cool little town. Now we are going to another town, which is only about 25 miles away on road, but we're not taking the easy way. We're already off road and we're gonna do a little exploring on the way there. Fill up fuel one last time and then go check out some mines and look for a place to camp tonight. And I think we're having spaghetti for dinner, so it should be pretty good. When you are on a multi-day adventure like this, being flexible is extremely important. You never know if somebody's gonna break down, you might get lost, or your just time distance doesn't work out. And that's what's going on with us right now. Our time distance is not working out. If we would have kept on pushing, we would have gotten to the really cool mines at dark, and then we would have got to camp super late, which we don't wanna do. We wanna be able to go explore this other area that we're gonna go to. So. The guys have been like, you know what? There's this trail over here we've never gone down. Let's go check it out and let's go find a place to camp. So the goal right now is to go find a place to camp before it gets dark. And uh, just remember, flexibility, positive attitude makes for a great adventure. We have had an amazing day out here exploring, but we have had a little bit of a challenge finding a really good camp spot, but we did find a nice little flat little wash area right off of the trail. Be beautiful view of the snow-capped mountains over there. We got a little protection, so we're gonna get a fire going, get some warm clothes on, get the tent set up, and somebody said something about spaghetti, so I'm looking forward to that. How many cabins have disappeared? And I kept the tires from spinning in the snow. Because that the low just seems way too low. Oh yeah. So Larry, you got dinner duty. What do we got? Uh, we're just gonna do some spaghetti and noodles. Uh, maybe some uh, Texas garlic toast. Okay, right on. Did you make the spaghetti? I did not. Okay. I have to fess up. No, uh, my beautiful gal did, Wendy. Oh. She uh, she makes a pretty damn good uh, sauce. Well, I can't wait to try it, man. I love spaghetti. Yeah, it's it's pretty good and uh, should be full. We got plenty. We need about six more guys to eat it all. <laughs> I'll eat a good. I'll eat a bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh -huh. 
that. That's good. Meatballs. Very hot. <laughs> and very good. Right on. It smells delicious. Very good. That's a bold statement, Jim. <laughs> Throw it down the tail. And... <laughs> so I think it's pretty good. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, Larry. You're Very welcome. good. Dinner was fantastic, and we had a great night of good conversation around the campfire on what was turning out to be a very chilly night. I woke up to a majestic sunrise that painted everything with a warm golden glow. It was beautiful. It was also cold and frosty, but thankfully, with two pots of coffee brewing and Larry getting the fire going, we were slowly beginning to thaw out. We were in no big rush this morning and it was nice to take our time, enjoying a slow start to the day, hanging out around the campfire and chatting about our adventures so far. I enjoyed hearing stories of all the adventure these guys have had hitting the trails together over the last 40 years and I could have listened to them all day. Between the three of them they have a wealth of off-road and camping experience and I was learning quite a bit from them. Jim volunteered to take on breakfast duty and sausage and egg burritos were on the menu. Speaking of learning a lot, he had a clever idea I'll be using in the future. Before leaving for this trip, he cracked a dozen eggs and put them in a plastic peanut butter jar. This prevents them from breaking in your fridge or cooler while you're out on the trail. Plus, he pre-seasoned them. What a great idea. It was a hearty and delicious meal, and there was plenty of food for seconds. What a great way to start our day. Looks good, Jim. Last night was a chilly one. It was in the mid-20s last night, and when we woke up this morning, there was ice on just about everything on the outside, a nice little frost everywhere, but there was actually ice on the inside of my tent from the condensation from me breathing. So we've had to let everything kind of dry out in the sun now that it's started to warm up, and warming up is relative. It's still in the low 40s this morning, but it, we've had a great morning. You know, we had the campfire, we had some coffee, we had some good breakfast, and just some good camaraderie around the fire this morning was great. Now we are gonna be heading out and gonna go explore many mines uh, this morning out in Pioche, and then we're gonna go uh, fuel up and go look for a camp spot and maybe get to camp a little early tonight, and I have dinner duty tonight. But we've got, uh, we got plenty of trail to see, and I'm excited to go check out some of these cool mines. These guys have told me some stories, so we should see some cool stuff today. Before we hit the trail, we were sure to make sure our campfire was completely extinguished. Just a good reminder, always take the time to completely put out your campfire. It could help prevent a wildfire.
we are booking right along and uh, Lance decided, hey, let's go explore some of these areas that we haven't been on our way to the mines. And we're all like, yes, let's go do that. And we are booking right along down these really nice, smooth trails. And it's one thing I'm noticing is these trails are not nasty washboard roads. They're really nice and smooth and you can just fly down them. It's really, really nice and it's beautiful up here. I mean, I can't tell you guys. I, I, I didn't expect Eastern Nevada to be this spectacular. I, I love it up here. I, I think this is a place worth coming back to. just driving along up on this mountain ridge and we saw these old mines and cabins down here. So we're just gonna kinda go on foot and just go investigate a little bit. Might be worth checking out. So Jim, you've been here before, but you said this was a while ago. How long ago was that? That was 25 years ago when we first found this place. And we camped down here by that steel building, and some people slept in it, and it was windy as a banshee. And the whole place shook. It was like ghosts were just rattling the walls. It was pretty spooky. That's yeah. cool. Pretty surreal to be back yeah, then, Yeah, well, huh? we had a big bonfire. There's a big mine down below. We'll walk down there. All right, right on. Now, we didn't have any information about this old mine, but it looks like it was a very large operation at its time. This mine shaft here was large enough to drive a truck through, and we came across this old shed that had hundreds of core samples. I'm pretty sure this place was bustling once upon a time. Back on the trail for a bit, these guys have another old mine they are excited to show you. This is the old Comet Mine, where silver was discovered around the 1880s. Through the years, this mine produced silver, lead, gold, zinc, and tungsten right up until the 1950s. Today, there are many structures and buildings in this area still standing, but we especially liked the massive machinery that still resides in the hoist house. This hoist was used to raise miners and ore in and out of the tunnel below. If you walk around further, you'll see plenty of other remains of the operations here. This is a place worth visiting if you make your way out here.
just left the uh, old Comet mine, and I gotta say, so far that has been my favorite stop uh, on this trip. I just love seeing those old structures, but for me, it's the big industrial machinery that they used way back then for mining that's still there is very cool. Some of you may know when I first joined the Navy, for the first couple years, I was actually a boiler technician before I became a corpsman. And so I have kind of an affinity for, you know, the big industrial pumps and boilers and machinery. I just love that stuff. And to see it still standing and in pretty good condition is pretty neat. So I really enjoyed that. Now we are backtracking the way we came uh, to this mine and we're on our way to Pioche and eventually hopefully grab some lunch because we're getting pretty close to lunch time. I have to admit, I've been having a blast driving through the snow today. We have been hauling and just having fun. Now we just dropped down into the old mining town of Pioche, and I have to say, this is a beautiful old small town. It's gorgeous out here. Now we're going to uh, top off fuel here, and then we're gonna head into town, grab something to eat, and kind of adjust our plan of attack and kind of see where we're gonna end up today and tomorrow. After topping off our fuel tanks one last time before we venture deeper off the grid, we spent a little time driving around Pioche. Pioche, Nevada is a small mining town that was settled in 1864 when a silver mine was opened up here. And by 1870, this was the largest silver mining town in Nevada. Because of its remote location, Pioche had a reputation for being one of the roughest towns in the Wild West. Today, there are over a thousand residents living here, and for many visitors, it's a great getaway town for those looking to trout fish, hunt, and venture off into the backcountry. We made a short stop at the Overland Saloon to take a moment and grab a quick bite to eat while the guys took a hard look at the maps to sort out time and distance for the next part of our journey. I gotta tell you, I have been having a blast these last few days with these guys. These guys are so awesome to hang out with, and the amount of knowledge that they have about this entire region is pretty impressive. I mean, 40 years of wheeling out here is pretty cool. So we just left Pioche, and after hanging out at that Overland Saloon and figuring out some mapping over the next couple days, I think we've got everything dialed in. These guys have got it pretty well set. Right now, we are on the hardball, and we're going to a pretty cool location, I'm told, uh, where we're gonna find camp. So we've got about uh, 30, 45 minutes of driving, and then we'll be hitting the dirt and looking for a cool place to camp, and there's a very unique structure that we're gonna check out while we're there. We had been on the trail for about an hour and eventually arrived to our next stop which were these three old charcoal kilns. In the 19th century and earlier, charcoal was used for furnacing fuel because it burned more slowly than wood and created a much greater heat that was needed for refining ore out in these mines. So they would bring wood here and turn it into charcoal. Today these are falling apart. And it does look as like some brave souls in the past may have camped inside some of these to escape the wind, but I'm not sure I would trust these old stone structures anymore. I will add that the colorful moss that was growing on the back sides of these kilns that is mostly shaded from the sun during the day was like a painting by Mother Nature. Just down the road, and we arrived to an old abandoned cabin where we decided to hold up for the night. All right guys, this is camp for the night. We're gonna use this old cabin as uh, some shelter because it's pretty windy out here. But what a cool spot. And check out, check out all the mountain views behind us. It's beautiful out here. You can see those kilns way off in the distance over there. Finding old rustic abandoned cabins like this out in the desert these days is a true treasure. Many have gone by the wayside as time and weather have taken their toll on them. 
When you do come across one like this, please treat it with care and respect. Tonight, this is going to be a great shelter for us to get out of the wind and cook a meal. And while Larry, Lance, and I will be sleeping outside in our tents, Jim is going to actually sleep inside the cabin. All right, everyone, it is very windy outside, but I just wanted to give you a peek inside the shift pod tent. So I have a Browning minus 30 degree sleeping bag. And under there, I've got just a little Sea to Summit sleeping pad. And this sleeping bag is unbelievably warm. It's big and bulky, but it keeps me warm. But check out the view from the tent. Oh yeah. And there is a very dirty JK. And there is the cabin we're gonna hang out in tonight. As the sun set behind the distant snow-covered mountains and the temperatures outside beginning to drop, we took advantage of the still functioning fireplace in the cabin by starting a fire, grabbing our chairs, and sharing more stories from previous adventures and telling stories from this one. Right, so it was good. It was beautiful. It was tight. It was tight. It was tight and narrow and windy. Yeah, we had to worry about a little bit of stuff, you know. I was at one point worried about the Jeep might flop yeah. into the tree, uh, so luckily that didn't. Well, you got three. Wheels. You got three wheels a couple times. A couple times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was that was definitely fun. It's a little after six o'clock. The sun has gone down and it is very chilly out. But being inside this old rustic cabin with the fireplace going is awesome. It's very nice. Now. I have dinner duty tonight and the uh, natives are getting hungry so I'm going to feed them and my wife has uh, given me the recipe to make her chili mac uh, which she made at camp recently. It's very easy to make and so we've got some kidney beans, some beef broth, some diced tomatoes, some uh, tomato paste, some garlic, some ground beef, onion and the most important thing is some ready made pasta. So I don't have to cook the pasta, I just throw it in there, mix it up and it's all good to go. We've got an onion. And, uh, and we're going to have a whole lot of chow, a nice, hearty, hot meal, which is going to be great tonight. So, I'm going to get started. I guess we're like, married to it, that one is So, you got to sometimes just do it, there All right, let's be honest, I know a lot of you are surprised to even see me cooking at camp, but the truth is I do cook from time to time, but I'm very thankful that my wife Regina put this recipe together. However, I did forget one thing. So there are a couple spices. We've got some chili powder, some cumin, and some smoked paprika that go into this dish. And she was very nice. She gave me line by line how many teaspoons and everything, and did I bring any measuring spoons? Nope. So. Here goes. We're gonna just gonna put some chili powder in here and hopefully it's okay. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes it really slick. Yeah. I think it was uh that you could feed yourself in a can without Marco. <laughs> I know people don't believe it. We'll judge the quality here in a moment. Okay. I'm a little nervous because Jim's probably going to be brutally honest. <laughs> Marco, you got nothing to worry about. <laughs> As he takes another bite and steps off. So it's not too bad? <laughs> of course it's not too bad, it's good. <laughs> An honest answer? Honest answer. Very good. Oh, right on. There you go. And Re Regina gets most of the credit. That's good stuff, Mater. Yeah, it really is.
It may be very cold outside, but mornings like this, way out in the middle of nowhere, with beautiful scenery everywhere you look, and spending this time with good friends is what makes the adventure to distant places like this all worth it. Larry took breakfast duty this morning and we were all admiring his biscuit steam tray setup that he had designed. What a great do-it-yourself project that allowed us to have some savory biscuits and gravy this morning. Put some biscuits. I've got a couple, I got these that are already torn in half. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. And uh, your butter okay. over in the coffee pot over there. If you want to pour no, the butter over there. Straight, straight <laughs> for the goodness. That smells so good. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. more? No, no, it's good right there. Oh, Thank you. Here. All right, all right. <laughs> oh yeah. It smells so good. Boy, nothing like biscuits and gravy on a brisk morning like this. Let's give this a try. Mmm. Oh, that's good and peppery. A lot of flavor in there. Nice job, Larry. Thanks for making hey, breakfast. You're welcome. Thank you. Fill it up. It's got a micro filter built into the spout, so when the water comes out. It's been a very brisk morning out here in eastern Nevada, but nothing that a hot cup of coffee and a warm breakfast couldn't remedy. And as we were sitting around having coffee at breakfast this morning, we were noticing that, you know, the last few days, we haven't seen a single person out on the trail. We've seen a few tracks, but we have not come across anybody. And to be out here for that period of time and not see a soul, that's pretty awesome. We are definitely remote out here, and I think this is an amazing place to come out and do some more exploring. I am very thankful for Jim, Larry, and Lance to have shown me some of their favorite spots. I think this is a place worth coming back to. Now today, we're gonna to be heading about 200 miles west to a town called Tonopah, and uh, we've got to lay down some hard miles, and we're gonna be kinda of pushing our limits with fuel, but it should be, should be a pretty good trip. But we're gonna end this video right here and uh, I think this has been a pretty good introduction to Eastern Nevada so hopefully you have enjoyed hanging out with us and experiencing this this has been a great adventure a huge thanks to those guys for putting this together if you haven't been over to trailrecon.com go check it out and again come out to Eastern Nevada you will love it thanks for watching